up? Look at this dude. <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? You already know what this is. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm fucking up. Get your shit together. Get all this together. is the America's Diaspora Part 3. And we're going to dive in. But here's a quick little recap real quick. Hey, go to YouTube right now and type in Naturalism of Yahweh so you can see my latest videos that I have released. If you're on TikTok, you need to go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now because I'm going to be leaving that soon. What, what the fuck? And make sure you become a member as well so you can get my latest content before anybody else. Now, you have learned in my last video that if an individual that's coming from Africa or inhabited Africa that was a slave then that person was labeled as a negro but if you're if there was a free person out of africa or inhabitant africa that never was a slave they was never labeled as a negro no matter the nationality or skin complexion you have learned that the term negro was applied to anybody any nationality that was a slave so it didn't matter if you was a Filipino, it didn't matter if you was an Arabian man, it didn't matter if you was a Sarcasian, it didn't matter if you was from Russia, Britain, it didn't matter where you came from. If you was a slave, you was labeled as a Negro. And also a Loro or a Sarcasian, a lot, a lot of crazy things that goes back to the term Negro. We had so many different variations of this labelism that applied to the so-called slave descent. In that last video, you will know that slave descent was such an ambiguous term. Today, they say slave descent is so-called black people. But when you go back and look at the real history, slave descent could have been anyone. You have also learned that the West Coast of Africa, <laughs> the West Coast of Africa wasn't even inhabited by the original or aboriginal being of West Africa. The West African region was just a whole gang of settlements of different nations from around the world that partake uh, in so-called slavery. You know what I'm saying? It could be Russians, it could be Germans, it could be Arabians. We already know the people of the European Isles was out there. And they had all of their slaves. In the last video, I told you, starting from the 10th century, who was the slave and who was a Negro? You have learned that. In the 10th century, the only way to know who came to America is that you had to start in the 10th century. Everybody in West Africa that was on those settlements that were servants came from different regions around the world you have also learned that american indians who were negroes was traded for african slaves you've seen three instances of american negroes being traded for african slaves they brought american negroes from north america from the caribs and south america to the west coast of africa and they exchanged those, Ameri those american indians for Africans but was they really Africans was they different peoples from around the world who were Negroes and various of different na uh, nationalities all this stuff should make you think and yes you was taught a major lie in history now let us continue with this same lesson the American diaspora. I know the other videos is not labeled American diaspora, but when you see an instance of American diaspora uh, topic in those videos, it's really could contributing to the same thing. Because basically, I was saying, what is a Negro? What is a slave? What is white? All of this tie in together to give you the truth. Now, allow us to begin this lesson. So we're going to continue in the same book where we left off at, and that is the Natives and Africans, Native Americans and Africans, or whatever. 
whatever the hell that book title was. But if you want to know the name of the book title, just go to the last video and you will see that. All right. So here we go. And it begins. It may well be that Americans were introduced into the Portuguese African outpost. That is the settlements of what I told you about <clears throat> in the beginning of this video where I said there was numerous of different peoples on West Africa and they already had slaves. So now you're looking at an instance of American Indians being shipped to Africa. So you may say, oh crap, yeah, the transatlantic slave trade reversed. Technically, yes, it is true. The transatlantic slave trade was told in reverse when it comes down to us as a people. We were shipped from America to different parts of the world, not from Africa, from different parts of the world. But the American Indians that was shipped to West Africa and the West and the American Indians that was living in West Africa during that time, maybe they was shipped to another region or whatever, or probably shipped back to America or somewhere else. Then you can call it the uh, African slave trade with our blood know what i'm saying but uh if you want to keep it in that sense just on some crazy shit but it says they were sent to the african outpost soon after the 1500s and it says as noted above for neo d nor nor run high was given a contract to ship slaves in brazil wood from brazil beginning in 1502 john volk volked See that sound like a Right there That sound like a German German or Russian States of Noranha Called Lorenha Lorenha During 1502 3 This merchant's involvement With San Gor I mean Horgo Horge Horge De Menea Menea Oh Ghana Okay Included supplying all slaves and wine to the port. Simultaneously, Lorenha held leases for Brazil in the uh, Guinea, uh, Guinea, a pepper monopoly. Most of the slaves taken to uh, Mania, Menina, uh were gathered together to Soea Tome, Tome. Islands, but it seems highly likely that Norenha would have utilized some of the Brazilian slaves he acquired in his African activities. Okay, at the very least, as mariners and laborers. Uh, sorry, laborers. You're gonna have to excuse me because some of these words, some of this stuff is in Spanish, as you can see. And I'm not very fluid in, uh, in Spanish And Some of these words is not in my vocabulary So I'm going to have a kind of A little difficulty In saying some of these words So bear with me And of course you're reading at the same time So <laughs> it is what it is So let's go we're going down here You can see right here They say they not only was just trading Africans for Brazilians And Brazilians from Africans but they was trading also the Brazilian wood, taking it back to, you know what I'm saying, Africa as well. They'll show you some uh, instance of American uh, materials, plants and things like that going to Africa. So just keep that in mind for those of y'all that like to say Africa is the motherland. Africa had all these things first. No, they didn't. Everything was brought there. But it says, a Brazilian scholar, Jose Hornero Horn 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 Rodriguez, was written that from the 17th to the 19th century, Brazil had more contact with and greater bounds, I mean, bonds to Angola, Dahomey, and parts of the coast of Mania, which is Ghana, and Ghania, uh, than did um, then did Portugal's, Portugal itself. Many Brazilians went to Angola as soldiers, peddlers, businessmen, prostitutes, and exiles. Again, many Brazilians went to Angola as soldiers, peddlers, businessmen, prostitutes, and exiles. You see the places? 
Didn't they say the the, the homie people they was sending people over here to America, sending Africans Africans to America? The, the homie tribe. Who was they really sending? Who was they really sending? Because now you see a connection of Brazilian Indians going to Angola and to the Dahomey tribe. So was they really sending their own people or was they messing with American Indians? You be the judge. But clearly you can see it says the Brazilians were sent to Angola. And Angola is one of those big places where they talk about slaves being sent from Africa to America. But now continuing, it would be very interesting to trace the first Brazilian American impact directly upon Africa. But Dallas, it is more or less simultaneous with the first African impact upon Brazil. By the 1550s, native Brazilians were in Portugal in some numbers in about the same time the regular shipment of Africans to Brazil commerced. And it says the Brazilian, the Brazil Africa, the Brazil Africa trade at first went largely via Portugal by gradually becoming direct, became by gradually became direct. So you see, I told you. Translated slave trade happened in reverse. They were trading Brazilian American Indians for Africans. So you see what's going on. Do you see why our alleged bloodline is popping up on the west coast of Africa? When they do these fictitious DNA tests? Why is that? Because your ancestors were shipped over there. It didn't happen the other way around. All right. That's what happened. You see it right here, the proof. A lot of people like to say all oh, happened in reverse, but they never have the information to back it up. They don't know where to go. But I'm showing you where to go. Yes, the Atlantis slave trade happened in reverse. It happened at the same time. They were trading slaves for slaves. All right. And it says the Portuguese vessels were noted for having crews of diverse national and racial origins again remember i told you in the last video i told you there was russians there was germans there was chinese there was tartarians there was all types of peoples on the west coast of africa in these settlements so again when i say who is the african who was being traded was it really aboriginal africans or was it different slaves from around the world who are Negroid or other um, nationalities that, that wasn't of the alleged Negroid race? Not Negro, Negroid race. That means basically different types of melanated people from around the world. The original habitats from around the world. Such as the Aboriginal German or the Aboriginal... Uh, Russian, Australian, uh, Papua New Guinean. You know what I'm saying? But that's what I mean. So I'm hope I'm hoping this is putting some type of clarity on what had happened and a sense of your identity. Because if it's not, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how else to break this down to you. Because I'm breaking it down so simple that even my little toddlers can understand this you get me so it said again we're going to read that part again it says the portuguese vessels were noted for having crews of diverse national and racial origins from madagascar to japan from madagascar to japan what i just tell you crews were often of african or indian south asian origin but in the atlantic we can we can assume as conjecture that a high proportion of american background just what percentage is not certain so they could say little or small it don't matter they could add they could do whatever they want to manipulate the numbers but just know for short people you call an african 
ain't even African. The people who you thought were slave masters wasn't even the slave masters. It was a lot to the story that people don't understand. And when this truth come out, it's going to be hell to pay. You think we the only ones that deserve reparation? A lot of people got here through servitude. And a lot of people got here through immigration. A lot of people just was just created during the incubation time because of depopulation reasons. A lot of people origins really started out of nowhere. Out of a test lab. Off of a Petri dish. Off of DNA splicing. But they would never tell you. But that's going a little too far. What you mean, natural? Where, where is this information coming from? I'd like to know that. Oh, we're going to get there one day. But not right now. So let's go ahead and continue to the next page. Black Africans reached Macau, I think I said that right, in Japan in the 16th century. In the 16th century, they're talking about North America right there, and Portuguese ships. But it is also possible that a few Americans or part Americans reached the east coast of Africa. Remember what I told y'all. They wasn't just bringing Africans to America. They was trading one group of people for another group of people. So when they started the uh, so-called African slave trade to America, they were sending American Indians from North America to the west coast of Africa in exchange for African slaves. And again, the numbers is not high. I am, I, <laughs> Africans did come here, but not in big numbers. And we're going to get there. We're going to get there. But it is true, Africans did come here, but not in insane numbers. And they did not capture every single American Indian and sent them to Africa. So don't say that ridiculous thing, because that is <laughs> not even true. And they didn't even have the capabilities to even do so. But other than that, they were trading American Indians for Africans. And they said they say it's possible that American Indians even reached all the way to East Africa. So we not, now we're talking about Arabia, to uh, Kenya, to Sudan, to Abyssinia, possibly even to South Africa too. Hell, let's not just stop there. Because there is American origins all through Africa. There is American culture all through Africa. Mayak culture. Cusco's culture. All through Africa, there's a lot of similarities. But everybody want to say, oh, no, it started out of Africa. And it spread it. No, it did not start in Africa. It was quite the opposite. But let us continue. All right. I see. I say the, uh, the last part again. But it is also possible that a few Americans or part Americans reached the east coast of Africa and then went to the far east. Japanese drawings of the Portuguese at Nagasaki's, the Nagasaki's, who is the Nagas, who is the Nagas. The Nagasaki's show many Africans, the Nagasaki's show many Africans. We're talking about the Mayak serpent people, Drakons. And it says, we're going to dive into those things later on down the line one day but it says but those of y'all that actually know about it shout out los shout out 432 drop for the people that brought this uh, information out about the nagas uh and cool mayo shout out him too but one day i'm gonna tap into this as well and build on these brothers and we're gonna spend more into the nagasakas the nagas the dracons the dragon the serpent people and it says show many Africans, but also a few brown men and possible Indian, Asian, or American appearance. All of these people are Negro people. I don't know why they said brown men, because I'm a brown man. And the Nagasakas are brown people too. Africans is dark and brown people. Asians and Americans are brown people and dark skinned people too. So I don't know why he tried to make a difference when they talk about the skin complexion because they all got the same complexions. But let's go. 
I'm not talking about the mongoloid type people. Now I'm not talking about the mongoloid type people. That's not the mongoloid type people. The Nagasakas are not the mongoloid type people. Let's go. It says an interesting example of a person of American ancestry going with the Portuguese to Africa, India, and the Far East can be seen in the career of Antonio de Abu Quirque. D. Col I can't even pronounce all that. I ain't even gonna pretend like I can. But it says 1682 through 1746, a Brazilian born man who served as governor of Maco, Maca, Macao, and Goa, and in the East Africa between 1700 and 1746. I'm not even gonna butcher that name. Uh, Mother Al Alguila de Barreros, Barreros was the Pernambuco, Pernambuco, and had, and it says, and had a white Negro American blood. So that would, could be considered. Stissel or a mulatto in a sense like that what do you call all three together and when they said white and negro what they mean who is white and who is a negro a meridian who is the meridian alright because the perception of what a meridian and all these people is is different compared to what they was talking about in the 1600s and also in the 1700s but I already tapped into what a negro is a Negro is anyone that was a slave. Anyone that is a slave. You could be of any nationality. But when you say Negroid, we're talking about many melanated people around the world. White can be anyone that is free. And you could be any nationality. That's what white is. But they try to say white means a pale man. Uh, Meriden, we already know those are Negroid type people. These are not Mongoloid type people when you speak about it in that time but now their bloodline was conquered their tribes was conquered and stolen and now they are the mongoloid the mongoloid native american man of today that's what they call them but all these the modernists don't think of the modern people you got to go all the way back and see what they was talking about so i'll let you know all these people are negro but when they say white we need to know what they mean Say Negro, we gotta know what they mean. That's the same thing. Excuse me. But it says, in about equal proportions, the fact that he was of a mixed race and born out of wedlock did not prevent uh, Abu Kurski, Abu Korkis, or Kur Kurkis, uh, rise to fame and fortune. In his case, certainly not unique. Because of the um, because of the rarity of Portuguese women in Brazil, we must assume that a high percentage of Brazilians who latter served in Africa and Asia were of at, at least part American racial background. You can't say part, they was full. Brazilians were later served in Africa or Asia. They don't think for one second that all these people just all of a sudden just mixed. That's not true. Everybody don't mix. In fact, even when you look at people today, a lot of people don't mix. A lot of people like to reside within their own communities and mix in with their own communities. So, if they was headstrong about this shit today, what makes you think they wasn't headstrong about it a long time ago? Because they was very headstrong about it. Especially all these Indian chiefs. They was very headstrong. They didn't even want you mixing with another tribe. So, why would they go even farther and beyond? Y'all got to think about it. All right, but these were still American Indians sent to Africa and sent to the Far East, which is Asia. They wasn't part, they was full. They was full. Okay, we're talking about 16 to the 1700s. These people were full people. So you gotta learn how to dodge the hijack. Cause we are reading the modern book right now. We're reading the modern ass book. So we're gonna see a lot of conjecture, a lot of falsehood in it. But when it comes down to these terminologies and things like that, now, here we go. And this is all red, so you know this is very important. It says, some Americans were utilized as military auxiliaries to Portuguese soldiers as well. In 1641, auxiliaries uh, were to be sent from Bahia 
Orio D. Uh, Junero, Janeiro, I think that's Junero, to reinforce the troops of Angola. So we talking about, again, Brazilian American Indians being sent to Angola to fight for African or Portuguese troops. And it says in 1644, the king approved a project to send Henrique Diaz with a non-white auxiliaries from Bahia um, to Angola. So he said a non-white. So could this be a non-person? That was, Could this be a free person? Or could it be a non-free person? Could it be... A Negro type, what could it be? Because when you say non-white and we're talking about 1648, what is that? What do that mean? What do that mean? Because they wasn't even calling themselves white at that time. White is something that came came by towards the end of the 1700s. So when they say white or non-white, what you're talking about, 1600s, free or not free? That is the question. But we're talking about American Indian from America to Angola. And it says Diaz has uh, was needed instead of instead in Brazil to fight the Dutch. But in 1645, an expedition left Rio de Janeiro for Angola. And it says again in 1648, nine some two thousand men were sent from Rio de Janeiro to Angola. You seeing the numbers of these American Indians? And the Portuguese troops in Angola were accompanied in their campaigns by auxiliary native troops. And thus, we can be confident that the Brazilian contingents included persons of American origins. Duh! It's quite obvious. We know they told a lie about the land of slave trade. And they say, oh, we're just sending people over there just to be slaves. That's not true. People was real life working. People was real life fighting. People was real life in wars. This was during the time of the Great Wars, people. Why was people doing this? And I'm telling you, one of these days, we're going to tap onto why did the slave trade happen? Did it happen just because they want to? People just money hungry? Oh, we just wanted to do it because the Arabs was doing it. Why was the Arabs doing it? Oh, they were doing it because of religious reading. Well, is that the case? Is that really? Or did a cataclysm happen? Or did, popul- or did depopulation happen? What had happened? Why wasn't there no ice around the ice ring? Why wasn't there no ice in Antarctica during the 1500s and the 1400s on the maps? Why wasn't it? Something happened, and they're not trying to tell you. All right? Cataclysm, Great War, slavery, all taking place at the same time. Something happened. And it says, after 1650, Angola was virtually a colony of Brazil. What? After 1650, Angola was virtually a colony of Brazil. And we can be sure that many persons of American ancestry were, went there. So how do you know that, that the people of Angola today is an American Indians? How do you know? We talk about Aboriginal Portuguese and Aboriginal Spaniards, Aboriginal uh, Brazilians, and Aboriginal so-called Africans all in the same spot. Why do alle- why do alleged Africans yearn to come to America? Why do they feel so connected to America? Y'all be the judge. Why do Africans be so hell bent to speak on our Indian business? Could it be because they could be part? Could they have connections? I don't know. This is something for you to think about. Something for you to think about. Okay? Okay, and it says, in addition to the normal kinds of contact, Angola was used as a place for sending Americans and other persons who proved troublesome in Brazil. Again, Angola was used as a place for sending Americans and other persons who proved troublesome in Brazil. And this day just talking about Brazil. What about the other places in America? What about New uh, New England? 
what they was doing with American Indians who they couldn't contain. Where was they sending them? Where? Everybody had ties. Everybody had ties. So, uh oh, somebody might have said, uh, Liberia. They might have sent them American Indians over there because they couldn't control them. They, 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 we couldn't control these prisoners of war, so we got to send them overseas. We got to send them far off because they're messing up the whole game. Come on, man. Y'all think. Think. I'm telling y'all. Angola was a was used as a place for sending Americans and other persons who proved troublesome in Brazil, and and it says in Carrera, uh, Carrera, Sierra, Sierra, Sierra. I can't pronounce that, but y'all can read it yourselves. And it says, for example, mixed blood in American undesirables, mixed blood, mixed blood in American undesirables. Who was the undesirables? King James told y'all who the undesirable was. The undesirables was so, the so-called wild man. Who was the wild man? Who came out the cliffs of the rocks with hair all over his body and became civilized? Who did the Moors domesticate it? Those was nicknamed the undesirables. And now we talk about the undesirable in American Indian mixed were potentially rounded up. Look at Drake. That's what you call an undesirable. That is an undesirable. Okay? Drake. That's the only person I can think of right now. Mariah Carey. Um, who else is mixed with uh, the undesirable blood in American Indian? I don't know. Um, Logic. You know what I'm saying? these people see maybe you can add on to it yourself and it says they was rounded up and shipped off to angola and it says in the 1720s onward so we got american blood 70 and around 1720s in angola and it says after about 1740 the islands of Frener uh Frener Frenera Frener oa whatever d no noranha was also used as a dumping ground for such people. So we got another location of where the American Indians were sent and the mixed American Indians were sent. And it says, and the such of, of Brazil Americans and other non-whites, again, what's a non-white, were deported to Angola for gold smuggling or for using a route passing through a region exposed to attack by free American forces. Who was the American forces? Those American Indians, I told you. Our people was putting the ten toes, ten toes down. Ten toes down. War ready. They couldn't handle us. They didn't win no war. They forfeited, and they went back to their shit, and our people slowly integrated with these people because they didn't want to... They was losing land. They was losing grounds. Our people did not submit get that shit out your mind our people was not unalive our people was not R-A-P-E into extinction and all our people do not have the undesirable blood so y'all need to get that fictitious ideology out your mind cause that is not true alright Man, this this is a great lesson. This is a great lesson, y'all. This is a great lesson. All right. Now we fit to get into the American slaves in Europe and Africa. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's tap in. Let's tap in. Hey, I hope y'all loving this, man, because I'm telling you, each video gets better and better. So you can make your own content and everything like this. And I'm sorry that you got to sit through an hour and 50 minutes, but that's what it takes. You got to learn. You got to sit here. You got to learn, right? So here we go. It says, now we shall examine data relating to the Americans who arrived in Europe and along the coast of West Africa, being with Portugal. Also, we get to get into the numbers. And it says the impact of Americans upon Portuguese life has not been studied, although Camions uh, and uh, Camions, Cam uh, Camions, Cam I think there's Camions, and, and his impact palm 
the Lusadas, the Lus Lusiadas, refers to the treaty, the treaties of Barsis, sad Brazilians. Okay, arriving in Lesbon, Lesbon. Okay, it says moreover, there exists a painting from the early 1500s, wherein a Portuguese artist uh, substituted a Brazilian, and it says a native, a native dress, a native dress, basically a woman. For the black king and his Adrucoa Ador, I mean Ador Cora Dos Rias Magos. And it says I um, mean adoration of the holy kings. Okay. And it says in fifteen fifty two, thereabouts the Lesbon had some ten thousand slaves out of a population of a hundred thousand, including Asians with with Hold on, it says, including Asians, South Asians, Muslim, Black, Africans, Americans, and others. And Lesbian? And these were slaves. Uh, 10,000 slaves out of the population of 100,000, including Asians. So they're talking about Asian slaves, South Asian slaves, Muslims, Muslim slaves, Black Africans, and Americans and others all these people were slaves I told y'all how many times I gotta tell y'all we American Indians were not the only ones just because you were you a so-called Negroid and you're here in America doesn't mean you're American Indian or you're a Russus here in American Indian you could be from these different peoples that would sit here from West Africa you could be Asianic you could be Arabic you you never know what you could be that's why it's very important to do your genealogy to know your roots, where you really came from. And once you know your roots come from those lands, you need to do extensive research to see is your people really African or is they really from these other peoples? All right. It says a film is a uh, film. Flemish uh, priest wrote in 1535 that Tudo O um, so Servicio. I ain't got to read all this. All service is done by captive Negroes and Muslims. All right. It says all captive. It says all service is done by captive, captive Negroes and Muslims in 1552. And it says a Brazilian slave was chained together with another slave trying to escape. What was the other slave? And it says in 1562, one Maria de Vilhena, Hena. Liberated by her testament, two Indians, a white, a brown, a black, a mulatto, two Moors. Do you see what's crazy with the terminology? She said her testament, two, two Indians. We already know the Indians was Negro. A white. In 1562, what is a white? A free person? A brown, that's a Negro. A black person, a Negro, a mulatto, a mixture of whatever race. And two more. There's still another so-called Negroid. You, do you see what I'm saying? So I don't know why they making all this big separation when they all the same freaking people. What the same melanin types? They all different people, but they all melanated. You know what I'm saying? It says a man and a woman. A chino. A chino. What's a chino? We talk about is we talking about the Pacific Islander? We talking about the a Chinese slave that became an Indian. And you know that the Chinese slaves, they were Negro too. And some of them was Mongol. We can't forget about the Mongol people. Some of them was there too. We can't we can't forget them. It says Chino, the Chino Azumel. Azumel. And it says in two other captives were the race was apparently unknown. They know. And it says about the year 1550, the king of Portugal declared that in order to avoid disputes as to who could get water from the river at certain places for the purpose of selling water in Lisbon. So you see all you see our people there, too, man. Now I'm showing you the different slaves, bro. I'm telling you, it wasn't just us. They just want you to think it was just us, but it wasn't. They, they just want to tie you to one place because if you see that you just don't tie to one place or you didn't come from this place that they say you came from and they say and then you see that the so-called slave trade is way bigger than what they saying 
They was getting all types of Negroes from everywhere. And they tried to make it seem like that old certain Negroes is exterminated. Went to stink. In reality, they didn't went to stink. What if they just sent them to a new location and gathered up all that tribe and sent them to a new location such as America, South America, the Caribs. Just switching up everybody. Saying they was genocide. You can't genocide no Negro race. We the earth. But that's just the deal. <laughs> Let's go. The sections, the sections along the river were set aside for various groups. Americans being included in the group with black and mulatto um, males. Again, what is black? What is black? Because the American Indians were already Negroids. What is black and mulatto males? Mixed people, mixed with what? Or black and mulatto females, slave and free, rather than, rather than with Muslims. How are you gonna call somebody a Muslim? How are you gonna call somebody a religion? That's not a nationality. We can then picture the interreaction of these various kinds of um, persons trying to earn money by peddling water through the streets of Lisbon. Man, it's crazy. It says, towards the end of the 16th century, there existed in the church of Sao Tomo, so Tome, in Lisbon, a comf comfraternity limited to Indians. Confraternity. Confrera. Means Indians. Limited to Indians. Okay. So we learned the new word right there. We learned something. So whenever we see this, y'all, confraternity or confrera. It's limited to Indians. And it says, in a letter of 1591, the king responded in a petition from the judge, overseers, and members of the group by um, granting for three years the right to ask for alms along the river. And Al Alfama and Borrero dos Esclu Escoloras, Escoloras provided that the right was limited to those who were very old or ill and could not support themselves. Now check this out. It says some Americans, especially after intermarriage with Africans, there you go, that is the African American, probably also belong to the uh, confraternity, which is Indians, of Rosario, Rosario, so Rosario, or Rosario, Pereira, Port, um, Pretos, Pretos. I know that's stand for like a um, black or something like that. The Confrera, founded by 1496 to provide it mutual assistance and communal life for um, Pretos, which means blacks. But what is a black? This group petitioned in the in the interest of communities, as for example, in efforts to keep officials. Uh, yeah, officials seeking runaway slaves from breaking into the home homies. Yeah, homes. Sorry, homies. Homes of Negras and preach and pretas. What's that say? What they mean? Female Negroes and female blacks. That doesn't make any freaking sense. But remember, a Negro is can be any race of people that is a slave. And now you just said black. So you know I'm right because why are they making a distinction between the two, between Petras and Negras? Okay? Who are in honesty women married to Linguas, interpreters, and Mor Morintes, a seaman in 1521, 1529, and 1646. So y'all see, right? Yeah, it may seem very confusing, y'all, but it really isn't once you sit here and actually understand it. Uh, hopefully, y'all understand it. I'm trying to break it down the best way I can, but hopefully, y'all understand it. Now, it says many American slaves were resold from Portugal to other countries. Africa wasn't just one. And it said, and this trade continued for at least a century. In 1592, for example, a widower of Lesbon. So, but what's that say? Beatrice, age 12, originally from 
Pernambuco, Buco, Brazil, to the Canary Islands. You know, that's Negroid. And it says, many Americans were sold as slaves in Spain. That's why you got the American Indian, American Indian in Spain, not the Mongol. As revealed by the uh, notaro uh, records of Seville and Valencia. And it says, it is, it is not possible to be certain as, as to the numbers involved since not all of the slaves seem to have been properly registered. And also, um, baptismal records were um, re relatively um, scant. Moreover, many slaves were classified only as to their color. And for some, even that is lacking. The color terms used such as loro. I told y'all. Negro. Which means black or very dark. Blanco. Which means light. Which means a yellowish color. Loro. Casa. I mean, Kesa, Negro, Brown, Almost Black, and so on, are not uh, diagnostic as to race because they refer to color as perceived by the authorities and not to ancestry. It is especially helpful when the place of birth is given both a uh, given, but all otherwise, it is not possible to tell whether a given Laurel, what is a Laurel? Intermediate. They're still a Negro. Mm -hmm. For example, as from um, the Americas, from the Canary Islands, and from Northern, and from the Northern. And it says there are a few reference to persons in the interior parts of Spain who may well have been an American ancestry. For example, a suspected uh, fugitive was apprehended in the Venetia area in 1579 he claimed to be free although his mother was a negra de las indies de portugal while his father was white what white mean and was from al uh near Tol toledi the suspect was called a negri a negri and his age 23 because his mother was probably from brazil and doubtless was half American. In 1599, a traveler coming from Portugal noted that uh, Ayamonte, Ayamonte and also Gibra Leon. Let's see. Oh, shoot. I ain't got the rest of it. Oh, yeah, here it is. Yeah, yeah, that is it. In that area, there were many black and darkish brown women from the Americas and from Soyo to, um, Tome Islands who were so beautiful and uh amor sorry amorous amorous that the local males often marry them so again we was uh again y'all already know our women fine as fuck y'all know our women's fine we got the most beautiful women on earth seriously we really do the world knows this ain't hey, nothing better than an american indian i mean than an american indian woman which is the so-called black people of America or the black people of the Americas including the Caribs it said Valencia as a major port of the Mediterranean was an import was was an important center for the transshipment of slaves to Italy and to other parts of Spain the situation was quite similar to that of Seville in that there were many loros called loros and loras Large numbers of Muslim slaves, Loros, Negroes, and Blancos. Remember, those are light-skinned people. Even larger number of black Africans and quite a few Canary Islanders. Asian Indians and Americans. Look at all the slaves. I tell you. Some differences show up in that many more Americans, Canarios, and Muslims were classified as Loros, while some Americans and many Muslims and almost all Asian Indians were classified as Negroes. A high percentage of Loros seem to be of Muslim extraction from North Africa and are said to have been born in Spain. Nevertheless, there are a number of Loros who were not identifiable by place of origin so y'all see i'm not i'm not playing 
Why you think some of our people look Asianic? Why you think some of our people look like an Arab? When I say the people that look like an Arab, it's some of our people that got them large eyes amongst us with the skinny face and the sunken jaws. There's the Arab-like people amongst us. And some they got the curly hair with a lot of complexion, but they're Negroid type people. It could be half Indian too. But I, when I go out and look at my people now, I can say, okay, you got an Arab background. Okay, you got an African background. Okay, you got, you're probably from South America. Your origin's probably from South America. Okay, you probably got origins from Spain, Portugal. You Okay, you probably got uh, origins from Tartary somewhere. You get what I'm saying? Start looking at our people phenotype. Cause we all don't look the same. We all got different origins. You get what I'm saying? All right, so where I'm at, where I'm at. It says the Asian Indians, the Asian Indians are usually not called Indians, but are identified as Negroes from the Col uh, Calico, Calicut and Bombay and Malacca, uh, India. One or two are identified as of a Loro color or Loro or Casa Negro. And it says, South Asia is usually called La India, or as in the case of Gonzalo. In 1515, the um, Hochita, Hochita or Chotita, India. Yeah, y'all see. And it says, as we, uh, as we shall see, however, there, there is a possibility that the Indias was sometimes used for Southeast Asia or Indonesia, even as some writers use India for Brazil or America. Mm. So they was out here calling Brazil India? Wait a minute, so that sounded like the reconstruction period. So where was the real India? Wait a minute, this should change your perspective on a lot of shit. I know some of y'all like, whoa, what? Wait a minute, because America was India superior, but they call it Brazil. And you know, Brazil was way bigger than what it was. It was a big empire. And it wasn't even called Brazil back in those days. But they said there's proof that they called the location of Brazil, India? Yo, I hope that take you down a rabbit hole and I hope that builds some shit on the lessons that y'all may make. Because I'm just saying, that's crazy, that's crazy. But let's go, let's go. It says, although the large majority of ident unidentified Negroes probably came from Africa, many called, he said probably, that's conjecture. They don't know where they came from because all these people was different nationalities from around the world. And a lot of these people were all called Negroes. So you just can't say, oh, they probably came from Africa. You don't know where the fuck they came from. Do not add shit to the text. Do not add a possibility. Only add fact. That's conjecture. So I'm going to have to throw that part out. And it says many could also have been from Asia or America. Same thing. I'll probably have to throw that out. Because you said probably. We're looking for fact here. But it's a good thing. They could be from Africa. They could be from Asia. They could be from America. Here are some examples of ship uh, shipments with no place of origin. And give it 15, uh, 1510, 228, very, um, what to say, very unassimilated from Lebanon, Lesbian, 1510, 227 from Portugal, also Bozalas, 1511, 112 from Portugal, very unassimilated. And it says 1511, 88 from Portugal, 1512, 101 from Portugal. 1514, 95 from Portugal, 1514, 27 from Portugal, six of whom were sick. 1516, 130 Negroes, of whom 15 died. And 1516, 66 Negroes, of whom three died. These figures leave room for a wide speculation sense. Okay? Y'all see. Also, in 1516, of a load of 88 Negroes, 85 were from Brazil and were Americans. Similar, um, similarly, in 1516, a lord, Pedro from Cal Cal Calicut, 
Kalika was registered who had been part of a group of 50, uh, of 50 Indians captured by the Portuguese and brought to Lesbon in 1514. So they, um, like I said, they're just mixing people up, y'all. They're just mixing people up. Okay, so now we're gonna take a good look at, at a good description of what these Indians had looked like coming from America to Valencia, which is Spain, right? So here we go. It says, the following is a list of known Americans arriving in Valencia to be registered through 1516, right? Okay, now check this out. It says, May 27, 1495, two merchants uh, presented Una Cuta, I mean, Cotovia, Cotovia, uh, whatever. <laughs> I don't care. Look, I ain't for to read all this Spanish mess, but we're gonna get there. We're just gonna get to the to the main thing of this. They basically said they age seven from uh, from the Indies right here, and it says from the Indies and the islands newly discovered. She did not confess because no one could understand her. All right. So they're getting people from the Caribs, and we know what color the people of the Caribs. We know what color they look like. So here we go. We got June 6, 1509. Uh, Martin, 10 years of Brazil, Terra de Negras, land of Negroes, land of Negroes. Hey, Monty, if you see this part, Brazil was the land of the Negroes. Y'all see it right there. They go to proof. So don't don't give me this. All Africa is the only land of the Negroes. No, America had the land of the Negroes too. Just like the um, the East Indies got a land of the Negroes too. But here we go. This boy came from the land of the Negroes, Brazil. And it says, along with a group of barbers. Whoa, the barbers too? Bet. And it says, uh, September 6, 1509. And it says the Venetian, I mean the Ven, yeah, the Venetian, uh, uh, merchant presented a Laura, fifteen, who was a native to the Indies, right? We're just gonna get to the uh, the translation. Name unknown because of translator. Basically, they came from the Indies, de la um, Brazil to Brazil. Yeah, they came from Brazil. Okay, the Indies was recognized as the Brazil. I mean, the Indies. Um, I guess Brazil is the part of the Indies too, which I thought was just the Caribs. But you can see right here, again, they're still the land of the Negroes. We got August 17, 15, 14. Uh, Boatres, 16, from the Indies, Indias. And now Felipe, 13. All right, got some Spanish going on. From the Indies, seized by a Muslim who sold him a uh, who sold him to Christians who carried him to Portugal. Okay, so now you got proof that the Muslims was over here. Or who was the Muslim? Who was the Moors? They was over here. They went. They got this boy from the Indies, but we don't know what particular part from the Indies. But that sounds. No, no, they almost sound like the Joseph story too when the Muslims came and sold them to the Egyptians and things like that. If you read the Bible and shit like that. But it says maybe refer to the East Indies. Okay, so he came from he may have came from the East Indies. All right. Okay. Remember I told you there's a land of the Negroes in the in the, in, the, in the East Indies. Okay, we got Okay, we got Axa. Oh, did I just read this? No, it's the same thing. Uh, Sana, now Felipe, 13, same place to Venetia from Portugal. Axa is a name coming to Muslim women, probably pronounced as Asia, but but could be from many lands. Okay? So, she a Muslim, but they don't know where she's from. But she's from the Indies. Okay? So, we got June 9th, 1515. Uh, presenter, present, we got Negroes, it said Negroes including those <clears throat> Loros, John Laura, now Isabel, 16, D Isabel uh, to Brazil. All right, he from Brazil or to, uh, yeah, from Brazil. And Kamein, now Cata, uh, Catalina, 10 from the same place, thus the dark 
Loras from Brazil were also categorized as Negroes. So we seeing what these American Indians was. They were all Negroes. But y'all see the proof right here. You can translate this shit from Spanish if you want to, but I can I kinda already know what just a, a little tad bit of what it's saying. So they got two Negroes, Alo from 15 February 6, 1515. Uh Alo now uh George 15 from D Hero. Hero uh, Horio and now Alavero Angro Arago now Alavero I can't I'm butchering all this shit I'm just gonna say where the hell they came from um same place these were the only slaves in Valencia from how I mean high Rio high Rio which is probably area of Trinidad okay okay now we got um four Blancos Indios presented and we're gonna just pick, skip past their names. Where are they from? Boy, now Isabel, same place. Yaya, 14, same. Um, we're purchased in Portugal. And it says, pronoun. It says, pronoun. What did I say? Paranon. Paranampo was probably Paranambuco, Brazil. Okay. So they say they probably came from Brazil. Again, we know those are Negroes, Blancos, or which means lighter skinned, uh, Indios, Indians. Okay, we got December 9th, 15, 16, uh, 16 88 slaves uh, presented, 85 from, from the island of Brazil. We know those was Negro, formerly pagans. We know who they call the pagans, but now Christians. And it says three Negroes that they came from Brazil. They are the Negroes regardless. And it says a Spaniard testified that all these had seen 23 Negroes die and taken them to be buried. Thus, Brazilians were called Negroes. Okay. December 12, 1516. Una Blanca. I mean, these are uh, Blanca. These are lighter skinned Indians. Saint Fran um, what's that? Francisca. 14 of the island of Brazil brought um brought in less bunch. So you see all our people being taken to these different places, right? You see all our people being taken to these different places. And it says thus the Americas were ver um, variously categorized as whites, loras, or negroes, depending upon their perceived color. Again, who was the whites that was in America? Who was the whites? I'ma let that you know what I'm saying be a lesson for y'all something y'all could build on but my perception of that is people that was already free but in this case i take it you could take it as another case as lighter skin indians you know what i'm saying lighter skin indians it could be the mongols it could be the mongols but it could be albinos or it could be you know the yellow skin complexion amongst us as well and it says loras and ne or negroes depending upon their perceived color it says, I have not seen any detailed data for Valencia between 1517 and 1596, I mean 1569. However, statistically, some are, uh, summaries relating to new and runaway slaves are available from 1569 to 1686. During this period, new color terms appeared, largely replacing Loro and representing various shades of brown, some 299 299 slaves and captives were a category as follows Negroes 1,401 Blancos three, um, 363 okay don't know what that word means we're gonna, we're gonna find out we're gonna find out later but you see the rest of that Stu Quince Color Mem Brillo Cocito 365 Morenos 53 Mulattoes we know what that means 22 uh, uh, what's it say? Coloros, Coleros, Coleros, one, Loros, three, Oscuros. I think that means very black. Obscura means very dark. Non classification, 789. Total, 299. So you see, look at the various of um, these terms. Look at all these terms for all these slaves that's right here in the Valencia coming out of America, people. 
that, that's really interesting bro. that's really interesting i'm telling you in the next one we may break down these words we may break down these words and see what these words really mean but we know just the um gist of it because we know coloros galeros I mean color loros that means brown obscured that goes back to the word obscure that means dark morenos lados i don't know what this one means but it says a quince color a stew quince color i think that's like a brownish yellowish color in a sense blancos we know that means a lighter color and negros they know that means that what they call today you know what i'm saying like black like the sudanese person that's what they meant by negroes back in those days if you so this right here this is just continuing from the last page it says thus blacks made up less than half of the total but some of the other shades of brown again what is black and what is brown could have referred to interior west africans such as fulos fulos thought to have thought to have a brownish color Come on, it's either you're brown or you're not. They like don't want to play games, but look at me. What the hell color am I? I am brown. And the people you see today in Mexico who claim to be Mexicans and all this other shit, they are not brown. They are of a yellowish complexion, not brown. Again, at the kindergarten, at the mass indoctrinations by these ABC clubs, you think you are black and you think you are brown. In reality, you can just look at yourself and just say, I'm brown, I'm yellow, I'm, I'm pink, I'm fucking blue. You know what the hell you is. I don't, I don't even know why we play these games. But it says, of the above, 435 were runaways, 421 males and 14 females, while 2564 were new slaves. And it says 1,253 males and 836 females and 475 not started. Most were quite young, usually aged 15 to 25. All right. And it says of the above 435. Hold on. I already read that part. I already read that part. My bad. Sorry. And it says the numbers coming from the um, from the Indias, Indies of Portugal were as follows. Now you can see the dates right here and it tells you if they knew, knew, or knew, or a fugitive. That's new. Remember, I told y'all people that did a crime, they became chattel slaves. So that's crazy how it says fugitive. New or fugitive. But we're gonna go down because you can see all of that right there for yourself, for your own documentation. And it says in the same period, 12 came from Cabo Verde. Cabo Verde. And it says 23, some a sale to me and 23 from angola thus illustrating that brazil probably was contributing about as many slaves as were each of the portuguese islands in angola i'm telling you they try to confuse they just say everybody african now but then i want to tell you this if they give you a true breakdown it will confuse everybody that is going to confuse everybody fucking identity it's going to confuse everything so that it's better off calling you an african because they <laughs> trust me your government know who the hell you is they know your roots they know where the fuck you come from they know your nation they know your nation but this is so confusing to y'all because they already been lying to y'all for so goddamn long so they might as well keep the line going oh everybody came from africa everybody's an african life started in africa yeah we don't want to confuse the bullshit when it was well documented back in those days, it was confusing to them, but it'd be confusing to your ass now. So now you got to question your own identity. Is I'm really African? What? So just because my people came from Africa doesn't mean my people are African. That could have just been dropped off in Africa and came from somewhere else. It's crazy. It's very confusing, people. But it's better to continue to lie. Then to tell the truth, because now they got to release a whole new documentary, make new edu make adjustments to the historical uh, educational system, throw out a whole bunch of bullshit about life starting in Africa or y'all came from Africa and all these slaves came from Africa. You, they got to throw out all this bullshit. You get what I'm saying? So it says, on the other hand, 84 came from other countries, 576 from um, new, uh, Guinea. And 481 from Granada, from Granada, we're talking about Mexico, Granada, 81 from Turkey, 
and so on. Las Indias de Portugal doubtless refers to Brazil rather than to India. And so far as color terms were concealed, the Brazilians were apparently categorized variously as Membrilo, I gotta find out what that is, Cocido, Moreno, Loros, Mulatto, or perhaps occasionally as Negro or Blanco. It was not occasionally Negro or Blanco. Majority of those people were what you call Negro. It was called the land of the Negroes. They already told you, but it seems like the author of this book, it seems like he's confused his damn self, but this is, this is not hard to understand. Get what I'm saying? But y'all see, it's like they're trying to wash they shit up at the same damn time after telling you the truth. He said they could have been Negroes after you just explained that the majority of these people was Negroes and they said the land of Brazil is Negroes. And now you're trying to clean it up because the author of this book is a fucking Native American that's trying to tell the truth, but he's trying to keep his identity attached at the same time. He don't want to tell you too much of the damn truth because he's trying to still keep his ties there. Meanwhile, his ties go back to the land of Tartar, to the land of the Huns, not here. And y'all going to find that out, too. All right. Jack Forbes, he know what he's doing, but he already told too much. Only the smart can put two and two together. And it says one of the problems in tracing the history of of Americans in Spain is that with so many slaves, 100,000 to 300,000 in all, I told you, of so many shades of color. Do I got that next part? The Spaniards tended to record these characteristics leading to individual identification, that is, appearance and not ancestry. Likewise, the term Negro was probably used broadly for many types of slaves. Told you. In 1560, for example, the more the more Siscos, Christian, the Christianized Moros, which was Moors, were forbidden to purchase Esclava Negros. Ni los tingen ni di um Barbaria. These was Moors that's being uh prohibited from buying so-called slaves all right and it says it would make no sense to forbid more ciscos from having barber or black slaves if they could purchase american mixed or brownish slaves i can't see how y'all not making sense of this Do y'all see why they won't tell you the truth? Do you see why they just say, fuck it, everybody African? Because when they try to do, when they try to tell the truth, it's way too much. And it's a lot of categories in this shit. So they like, you know what? It's too much. Let's just call everybody African. And about a hundred years, we give them shit reparations after they kind of wake up. But we're going to do it from state to state. And when they accept it, they automatically accept them being Africans on top and denouncing their American heritage. It's crazy, people. It's crazy. Peace family. Now you just seen all of that what I just showed you. I showed you more proof of the American diaspora. I showed you also that a lot of our people went to various different regions around this earth, such as Spain, Arabia, Japan, and so on and so on. I showed you the numbers of our people leaving America, going to these other lands. I was showing you instances of Africans being traded for Americans, Americans being traded for Africans. I showed you the different nationalities that was in server to um, servanthood too, and they was called Negroes as well. I would like to see what y'all gonna build off this, man. I know your content is gonna be so great after you build your information off this. Also, I would like to show you 
a couple of photos of different original people from around the world. And then we're going to close this. And then you'll be looking out for part four after this. So check out these photos.
This is Dan Young of Yahweh. This is Dan Young of Yahweh.